Thank you, everyone. So what I'm going to show you is, with Heatwave Lake House, how easy it is for you to analyze query, to run machine learning on hundreds of terabytes of data, which could be coming from a variety of sources. The data could be in the object store, the data could be exported from other databases, or the data, the data could be inside a transaction table in MySQL Heatwave. So let's uh, play the video, please. So to start off with, I have an instance of Aurora, which is running in AWS. I'm going to export the Aurora database into a Parquet file. So the export from Aurora happens into a Parquet file, which goes into S3. I'm going to simply copy the location of this file, and I'm going to provide this as an input to an instance of MySQL Heatwave. Now, this is Heatwave Lakehouse running in AWS, so there is no data movement happening. The service is running inside AWS. So this is an instance of Heatwave. I will specify the, co uh, the location of the export from Aurora. And the first step when I specify this location is that Heatwave invokes Autopilot. Autopilot automatically determines the mapping based on the various attributes of this export file to the in-memory representation of Heatwave. For instance, how many attributes there are? What is the name of these attributes? What is the data type, precision, and such? And this is done automatically. Once I've specified this mapping, it's just the mapping. The data is not being copied uh, to Heatwave yet. Next, I'm going to uh, specify the location of about 100 terabytes of TPC DS files, which are stored in a CSV format. I just specify the location of these files, invoke Autopilot, and Autopilot will do a similar mapping information. So it's actually scanning the data. It is not just based on the header information. It's actually scanning the data in a very intelligent manner so it can scan about half a petabyte of data in less than a minute. And it determines the appropriate mappings, the names of the attributes, the data types, the precision, and such, so that it can map into the memory of Heatwave. Once this mapping is specified, before I can run the queries, I basically need to provision a cluster of the appropriate size. Now, this is the list of the objects which you see from the console of Heatwave on AWS. And you can see that there are some objects coming from S3. There are some objects which are stored in the relation, uh, relational table. And all of this is visible from the same console. So now, if I want to provision a cluster so I can process this 100 terabytes of data, with Heatwave, Autopilot automatically determines what is the optimal cluster size. With other services, you have to do a guesswork that, hey, what's the right size? With Heatwave, you can estimate the cluster size. Autopilot runs machine learning and predicts exactly the number of nodes needed. So in this case, the system is telling us that we need 222 nodes, and it also specifies the in-memory representation for this data. Now, I'll take this number of 222 nodes, and I'll edit the cluster. And in this process, I'm provisioning a 222-node cluster with the heat wave. This takes about 12 minutes. So in 12 minutes, I'm provisioning a 222-node cluster. Once this is done, now the only step remaining is for me to load data, this 100 terabytes of data coming from a variety of sources into heat wave. We can load this 100 terabytes of data in parallel into the heat wave cluster, and it takes just about two hours. So in two hours, we load this 100 terabytes of data into Heatwave, and now the system is ready to run queries. Now, the query I'm going to show is it's one of the TPC DS queries. And what this query does is that it looks at the sales for various products for a given day or the week this year and compares it with the same time period last year. So basically, what this query is doing is trying to like see what is the change in the trend of the sales of various product teams or, or, or product lines compared to last year. And structurally, it's a moderately complex SQL query. It has four joins, group buys, order by. Now we're executing this query on 100 terabytes of data. It takes 36 seconds to process 100 terabytes of data, and we get the results. Now, one of the properties of Heatwave is that it offers real-time analytics. As Edward was talking about, that's one of the benefits customers see from Heatwave, which means that if I update one of the transaction tables in the MySQL database, and if I rerun the query, I should see the updated results in real time. So let's go ahead and update one of the tables, and then we're going to rerun the query. 
When we rerun the query, we expect to see the updated results. So let's see if we see that. So we see the updated results, which is expected. But what is interesting is that the execution time dropped from 36 seconds to 24 seconds. Why is that? Because we don't have a result cache. The reason is autopilot. Autopilot learns from the previous queries which have been run. It provides this information to the MySQL optimizer, which then does a better job in terms of creating better execution plans. So the system gets intelligent over time. Now, on the same cluster, using data in the object store, I'm going to run machine learning with Heatwave Lakehouse. So we have a bank marketing data set, and I'm going to show how simple and automated it is to create a model, to run predictions, and to run explanations. So I'll pick one of the uh, files over here, which is a bank marketing data set. And the only thing we need to specify is the column on which we want to run, uh, we want to create the model, and the kind of model we want to create. So we're going to create a classification model. And optionally, we can specify the optimization metric. Once this is done, with a single click, Heatwave AutoML creates a model. It does the pre-processing, figures out the optimal algorithm, the right set of features, the optimal hyperparameters, creates the model, stores the model inside the database without the data or the model ever leaving Heatwave, everything being done on the same cluster. And we see that the system chose XGBoost classifier as the algorithm. Now that I have the model stored in the database, I can run predictions. But before I do that, I want to run explanations to see that for this bank marketing data set, what are the attributes which really influence the prediction? So we run the explanation, and we see that the duration of the call which the salesperson made to the customer is the leading indicator of the outcome, which is intuitive, that if the call is lasting longer, there's a higher chance that the customer is going to buy the product. Now, since I'm kind of satisfied with the, call, uh, the, the model, I can now run predictions. I run prediction on a test data set. The first column is predicting what is the predicted um, outcome. The second column is showing what is the real outcome. For the most part, the values are the same. But in one of the cases, like the second row, you can see that the predicted outcome is different from the real outcome. In this case, if the customer is interested, you're interested, we have a built-in what-if analysis tool, which you can go and query and use to kind of get an information as to why was the uh, outcome different than the predicted, out, uh, predict, predicted result. So what I've shown you is that with Heatwave Lakehouse, how simple and efficient it is to do transaction processing, analytics, lake house, and machine learning. This function is available on AWS, OCI, and Azure. Thank, Thank you so much. Everybody.